Welcome back. SparkCon's success as an open source festival has turned into a national model of grassroots revitalization in venues across the country, including major efforts in Memphis and New Orleans. And just like any grassroots movement, volunteers and sponsors are the key to success. Brandon Cordry and Chase Bryan are here to tell you how to get involved. And to both of you again, it's good to see you. Thanks for hanging for another segment. Well, volunteers, I gotta believe that's important in an event this big. Uh, yeah. How do you go about getting volunteers? It's, it's huge. 99% of the folks that are out working smart card are volunteers. Um, if you are interested in being part of the creative side, we have 14 sparks that follow 14 different sort of genres. You don't, aren't limited to those. You, we actually have added bike polo for like three or four years to the event. That's not art or design, but it's fun and it's interesting and a little bit weird. So <laughs> come on out to come to our, one of our um, open community meetings and get involved in that way. The weekend of, we always need people to help. Uh, trace out chalk squares or schlep water back and forth. Mm -hmm. So we're always interested in having folks come out and help us with that way. Yeah, and you can email volunteer at sparkon.com if you want to get involved. It's also listed on Activate Good. And if you email volunteer at sparkon.com, it will go to Janet Strackey, who's been involved at the very first SparkCon all the uh, way through yeah. this year's, and she's been heading up volunteers because she came out looking for something new and different in Raleigh got involved as a volunteer the first year and has taken on a bigger leadership role throughout the years and, and gotten involved with Activate Good, helping them with their work because of her role at SparkCon. So a lot of these volunteer opportunities lead to bigger you know, community engagement. I can see where there's a lot of good networking that could take place, but I know this can't be free. I mean, is I mean, the city of Raleigh's been very good to you, but I, it costs money, which means you probably need sponsors as well. How does that work? Yeah, VAE is a small nonprofit. We do receive funding from the city of Raleigh based on the recommendations of the Raleigh Arts Commission. And they've been longtime supporters of our work, but that's operating support for the organization. And outside of SparkCon, we do 80 exhibits and 50 plus programs and, and have a lot of other resources for artists, but SparkCon is about one fifth of our budget. So we have a lot of donors who support it because they believe you know, in a specific spark. So they love Music Spark and they love that their band got their start performing there. So they've been longtime supporters. We've had um, people who are sustainers through a sustainer program. Maybe they give $5 a month and that just helps throughout the year to support the efforts that we're putting into SparkCon. And then we have sponsors, which make up the largest portion of the support we get for SparkCon. Um, and we've had some longtime sponsors like Duke Energy and Red Hat. And then every year we have new sponsors that come in because they want to get involved. They either want to support the creative side and they just believe what we're doing is important, or they want to get in front of that creative audience and promote their, act, their sort of product. And we require that they do something creative as well so that there's continuity throughout the festival. So you'll see, you know, this year we have a LASIK sponsor who's going to find something creative to do to engage the community and by allowing them access to our crowd at SparkCon, which has been over 84,000 people in a year, wow. we are, we're getting funding in order to keep supporting these artists and their creative endeavors. Well, that's terrific. I mean, obviously it's successful and you're, you're accomplishing what you set out to do. Otherwise you wouldn't have that kind of support. That's, right. that's incredible. Now you mentioned 14, I think different categories that, and for folks who maybe aren't so much into the art or doing weird things, but would love to come down and participate. What, what kind of things can they anticipate seeing? Oh, we have everything from robots to fire spinners, obviously the chalking, the street painting, which is 250 chalk yeah. squares by thousands of artists. There's a little bit of everything for everybody. Yeah, it goes from food to tech to there's a, um, a treasure hunt this year, um, Spark Quest. Mm -hmm. uh, it goes into design um, forums and panel discussions. So it really is something for everyone. A Kid Spark that specifically provides kids an engagement opportunity. And like Chase said, we have flexibility in all of that, right? So you come out and you say, I'm not sure this fits in, and we'll find a home for you. It's not about fitting in. It's just creating a structure so that you can thrive, right? And that's what spun off different businesses and different collaborations. Two years ago, we had two people where SparkCon was their first weekend. They just moved here, and they came out, got involved in circus, and they both ended up 
getting jobs in Raleigh that they hadn't moved here with because of the connections they made at SparkCon. And that was not facilitated by us, it's just we built the platform and they used it. I'll be done. Well, I've read too that the uh, artists that do participate, their careers have been expanded. Give me a little background. I mean, that must be great for you to see an event like this and people who may not have had right. that career move actually see it come yeah. to fruition because of this event. Yeah, Katie and Casey um, have headed up Circus Spark for a long time and this year's the first year they're not heading it up because of the trajectory that SparkCon put them on. They got into doing circus and acro and were doing it out on the streets during First Fridays just on their own and Beth and Ali Khalifa came along and said, hey, we have a stage at SparkCon in Moore Square in the first year. Do you want to do this on that stage? And they were like, okay, sure. And now they have um, Imagine Circus, which when they came to us and said, you know, we're going to quit our full-time jobs and we're going to start a circus company, we were like, good luck. Okay, <laughs> That's great. That's great. That sounds amazing. And now they, I see posts from them all the time, looking for Fire Spinner in Kentucky. You know, they're sending some of their people from here. They're building new communities out in Kentucky with, with people there. It's all across mm -hmm. the nation and it's just because they took that first leap. They got on that stage. They were given an invitation by Ali and Beth and they found their people through SparkCon. And so those artists, that's just one example, but those artists are meeting people, collaborating and seeing their ideas just slowly become bigger. And that's a great thing about Raleigh is we're sort of an open source city. We're willing to lend things to our neighbors. We're willing to extend a kind gesture and say, let's give it a chance. Sure, if it fails, we'll still be here. You know, we'll, we'll grab a drink with you after and Yay. say, that sucked. How can we make it better in the future? And SparkCon's just utilized that to make a creative community out of already a giving community in Raleigh. Oh, it just sounds like so much fun for it's somebody great. who either wants to be an artist or just come and hang out. I love weird stuff, so I'll be there. <laughs> All right. Thank you both. Stick, yeah. stick around when we come back. We'll learn about Dance Spark, and you'll find out if you have what it takes to be part of this year's dance crew. <laughs> 